Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with mini croissant crust pecan pies. That's right, if I knew these were gonna come out as amazing as they did, I would have made way more than six, since this was one of the more successful experiments I've done in a while. And basically this involved trying to do mini pecan pies without having to make a pastry dough, and instead using a croissant roll as the crust. And I just absolutely loved how these came out. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. And since we don't have to make pie crust, we can skip right to the filling, which is gonna start with some unsalted butter, some brown sugar, as well as some light corn syrup, which no, are usually not that dark in color, but I was trying out a local artisan organic light corn syrup that included some vanilla flavoring, and I think they added some natural coloring. But anyway, the point is any light corn syrup will do. And then we'll also need a little bit of salt, as well as some real pure vanilla extract, and then last but not least, a little splash of bourbon whiskey. And of course, before you add that, make sure you take a little sip to make sure it's still good. And that's it, we can head to the stove and place this over medium high heat. And what we'll do is wait for this to come up to temperature and start bubbling, at which point we'll take a whisk and give it a mix. And then all we need to do to finish this is simply let it boil for one minute, at which point it's probably gonna look something like this. And believe it or not, that's it. We'll go ahead and pull it off the heat and we'll let it cool down for about five minutes before we very carefully and very slowly whisk in two beaten eggs. Actually, I'm just kidding. After five minutes, we're just gonna dump in two whole eggs and whisk vigorously. And despite doing this wrong, according to most of the real chefs, you'll see we're not gonna have any problems with scrambling the eggs. So feel free to use the correct technique and whisk the eggs in really slowly, or just be brave and dump them all in at once like me. Okay, so that's your call. I mean, you are after all the Marco Pierre White of doing it right. But you know what? Sometimes wrong is right, as you just observed. And then once that's been egged, we can go ahead and stir in our pecans, which as you can see, I've roughly chopped. All right, for normally sized pecan pie, I do prefer the whole halves. But since we're going smaller format, I think a rough chop works better. And then once we have all that stirred together, what we'll do is set that aside for about five minutes or so, during which time it's going to cool down and thicken up a little bit. And while that's happening, we can move on to prep our croissant crusts. And that's gonna begin by very generously buttering a muffin tin. Okay, if someone's watching, you should be slightly embarrassed by how much you're putting in. And then once that's set, we can go ahead and take three croissants, ideally some freshly made ones from a decent bakery. And what we'll do is take a knife and cut that right in half to reveal all those beautiful buttery flaky layers. And then we'll basically cut into each half like this, but not all the way through. Okay, we're just gonna open it up like we're making a little sandwich. And then we will take that and we will push it into our buttered pan, pressing it down very firmly. And then what we'll do is take some of the high points that are sticking up past the top of the pan and we'll tear that off and we'll use it to patch some of the lower spots. And by the way, as long as these croissant halves are pressed down and pushed all the way out to the sides, don't worry about these looking neat or being too precise because once these are filled and baked, they are gonna look spectacular. And the only thing we should be concerned with is that that cup is fully lined and we've created the maximum amount of room for the filling, which of course is gonna be the next step. So once that's set, we'll go ahead and grab our pecan pie filling and we'll go ahead and divide that evenly between our six croissant crusts. And one tip here as you're filling this, make sure you're stirring the mixture before transferring every spoonful. Okay, because we don't want some of these getting all the nuts and some of them getting all the syrup. And then the last step here, once those are filled, is we'll go ahead and do a little bit of fine tuning, which basically involves making sure all the pecans are in the cups. And we don't have any pieces sticking way up above everything else, which could possibly burn because it has more exposure to the heat. And then besides making sure all the tops are fairly uniform, we can go ahead and clean up any of the syrup that dripped between the cups with our fingertips, since we don't want that stuff burning on. And then once the pan's been cleaned up a little bit, we will use our mouth to lick our fingers clean. Oh yeah, don't forget that part. And that's it, these are now ready to transfer into the center of a 375 degree oven for about 25 minutes or so. And yes, I did place a pan underneath in case we had drips. But anyway, we'll bake those for about 25 minutes or until gorgeously browned and looking like this. Oh yeah, that's looking nice. And as far as doneness goes, the center should be just set, maybe a touch soft, but not still liquefied. And then even though I hadn't made these before, I knew from experience working with similar things, if we don't get these out of the pan while they're still pretty warm, we are not getting them out of the pan. 
So what I did is let these sit in the pan for about five minutes before giving it a turn to loosen it up, at which point I carefully lifted them out without incident and transferred those onto a plate to finish cooling. And by the way, there's a lot of pies that are great warm. Pecan pie is not one of them. So please let these cool down all the way before you serve them. Speaking of which, we can just pick these up and eat them like a muffin. But since vanilla ice cream and pecan pie is like one of the best combinations in the history of the world, I'm going to go ahead and serve mine with a scoop of that. But I'm not going to eat it with that fork, you see. Okay, I'm going to use that to press the ice cream down. After, of course, taking a whole bunch of contractually obligated pictures. But I'm going to press that down into a nice even layer. So I can then pick this up and eat it like a muffin. An ice cream topped, croissant crust, pecan pie stuffed muffin. Which was exactly as extraordinary as you'd think it would be. And I wasn't kidding in the intro. As I was eating this, I was actually mad I only made six. So do not make that mistake and double this recipe. Or triple or quadruple it. And what we have going on here is a filling that's exactly like pecan pie. Which makes sense, since that's exactly what it is. And then as far as our croissant crust goes, it's beautifully crisp and flaky around the top edges. But underneath, it's basically been saturated with that beautiful syrupy pecan pie filling. And it takes on a texture very close, believe it or not, to baklava. Okay, because that croissant had all those buttery layers, it doesn't really get wet and soggy, but more so candied in that syrup, which is why it reminds me of that iconic Middle Eastern pastry. In fact, let me go ahead and finish this video up so I can go out and get some baklava and eat it with vanilla ice cream, which until this video, I had never thought of doing. And while I do that, I hope you go out and get some pecans and croissants you give these amazing mini pecan pies a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.